Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Tabeka. I'm a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Uh, today, our topic is metabolic on and mitochondrial theory of cancer development, and we will talk about um, how this can be applied to the novel approach of, uh, to treatment of oncological patients. Because as we know, the standard uh, treatment is um, often not uh, as effective as we would like. So, uh, let's talk uh, about is cancer a really a metabolic disease? Uh, and uh, is it connected to uh, problems with energy production in the cells? Is it the basic thing that happens before cancer cells develop? Because now uh, our oncology believes that uh, the problem is mutation. This is a plan of our few uh, upcoming videos. Uh, we will talk about why generally accepted uh, theory of cancer development may be actually wrong sometimes. Um, how, what is the role of mitochondria in uh, cancer development? Does cancer really like sugar and is uh, keto diet a, a key to treatment of any cancer? Are exercises beneficial? Is it possible to starve cancer? Uh, what about um, hyperbaric oxygenation bearer chambers, you know, when the person is uh, put into the special hermetic chamber, they apply higher a pressure there, they add some oxygen and the person lies there and um, gets this treatment. And um, successful cases of treating patients using these non-standard approaches. I will show you also. So let's get started. Okay, today I'll tell you something that oncologists won't tell you. Uh, why they won't tell you? Not because they're stupid, but because uh, it's not an official approach and it's not something that is studied in medical schools. And uh, in um, usually you can see here in uh, oncological congresses. Uh, we believe nowadays, not we believe, oncologists mostly believe that uh, cancer is the mutation. What happens? Uh, there, there are two types of genes. Some are oncogenes. Oncogenes make uh, cells to grow and divide. We know that cancer is the uncontrolled growth and division of cells. Uh, that means that uh, if um, this oncogene is activated, for example, by mutation or by some substance, it may cause the um, permanent stimulation of a cell to grow and divide. During this growth and division, uh, there are um, we need to duplicate the DNA and uh, of course, there are always some errors there and changed code. In our body, it's smart. Our body is smart. It uh, has many mechanisms to fix these errors. Uh, if it doesn't, well, uh, if it doesn't um, help, then uh, the cells will go into apoptosis. Uh, there are some other types of uh, killing these cells or immunity will come at the end. If nothing happens, nothing helps and uh, the cancer cells will die because many cancer cells are produced in our body every day, but we don't develop cancer. And um, the second type of gene uh, is um, tumor suppressor gene. Uh, that means that these genes, they stop cells from growing and developing. Uh, and uh, these are protective genes. If they're mutated, they may lose their function and uh, this may lead to cancer development. Some hereditary cancers, for example, BRCA, may have this problem. Uh, for example, we need only one oncogen to be activated to produce cancer or two tumor suppressor genes uh, to be inactivated to uh, produce cancer. And some hereditary cancers uh, are, you lose one tumor suppressor gene, for example, and uh, you have only one normal copy. And of course, uh, any mutation to this gene will lead to cancer development. That's why these people are at increased risk. For example, you know Angelina Jolie, she had this problem. But what is interesting that uh, BRCA or P53 mutations, uh, they also cause their uh, metabolic changes and mitochondrial dysfunction. We know that there are a lot of uh, risk factors of cancer development. Some are, uh, can um, damage uh, the DNA directly, causing mutations, okay, we understand uh, this supports our main theory, but some others, they don't. 
and um, they do not really support uh, this theory. And uh, many factors, they cause mitochondrial dysfunction and uh, the damage to energy producing factories of the cells. And uh, that already leads to cell degradation. What are the risk factors of cancer? We know that uh, ionizing radiation, viruses, uh, some maybe fungi, parasites, sometimes uh, chronic inflammation, uh, obesity, smoking, uh, chronic hypoxia, chronic lack of oxygen, and many others. By the way, mitochondrial dysfunction may be the cause of many other chronic progressing diseases, like, for example, Alzheimer's disease. Evolutionary, we develop the mechanisms of effective energy production. We take molecule of sugar, we take oxygen, uh, the cycle goes on, uh, the mitochondrial work, and they produce a lot of energy from one glucose. And uh, there is more old, evolutionary, ancient mechanism of uh, energy production. This is called fermentation. Uh, it doesn't need any oxygen. Uh, it's believed that uh, before uh, our planet developed atmosphere, the organisms uh, were using these mechanisms because there was no oxygen. Uh, that means uh, they are not dependent on oxygen and they uh, don't need it. And um, the problem is uh, to produce uh, the same amount of, uh, um, more of um, energy, you need uh, many, many, many times more uh, sugar molecules than if you uh, do it in a more modern way with uh, the usage of oxygen. When uh, mitochondrial uh, become uh, dysfunctioned when their energy production is impaired, when uh, there is chronically not enough oxygen, cells might adapt to survive and they own these ancient mechanisms and develop backwards in evolution. If you read the conclusions of the doctors who check biopsies or uh, surgery materials of cancer, they write that uh, this tumor is uh, poorly differentiated or highly differentiated. What does it mean? Highly means closer to normal body. And poorly means very like evolutionary retarded. That means these tumors went backward already. And often we can see that uh, these tumors, they evolve. And uh, they, um, with years, they become more and more retarded. Uh, because their dysfunction is not... Uh, removed, it's not fixed. And our body is multicellular, we have a lot of organs, it's the highest level of evolution for today, and every cell makes its very specific functions, they work together, they help each other, and in these ancient uh, organisms, uh, in these ancient uh, cells of uh, cancer, uh, they don't care about others, they are um, not developed uh, evolutionary, and they don't function as they should be and then do, then do they don't do their function for our body don't help our body they just eat consume energy consume our food and that's it and uh, occupy space and they behave uh, themselves uh, anciently uh, meaning they will just grow and divide and survive without any oxygen that's why if you think that you can uh, kill the tumor by uh, decreasing depleting its oxygen you are wrong by the way, it can easily survive in very low oxygen and in cyanide environment. It's for those who love their apricot seeds, for example, uh, in order to produce cyanide and make uh, tuber um, intoxicated. And here in this article, by, by the way, Thomas Seyfried is the, one of the leading, leading uh, authors in the field of metabolic mitochondrial development. Uh, he is the leader of the lab and... Uh, in, in the USA, uh, old professor, mostly they work with gliomas, with neural cell tumors. And uh, here he describes uh, the metabolic theory and uh, that uh, two main sources of fuel for tumor are glucose and glutamine. Glutamine is a mean acid. But first, let's start from glucose. We already understand that tumors are more ancient according to the theory. Uh, it's uh, not official theory, by the way, but I cannot call it theory because it has a lot of clinical and preclinical data proving its uh, worth. So, according to the theory, we know that 
uh, yes, for production of uh, energy by tumor, it needs a lot of fuel because it doesn't use oxygen. It needs a lot of sugar. Uh, may, many of you heard about PET CT, PET scan. Uh, this is uh, the device where a patient gets some uh, glucose that is marked by special shining substance. And uh, when it goes into the body, the um, tumor uh, that is very hungry for glucose, it will grab a lot of this glucose, uh, but it's marked, it will shine on CT. Watch how it looks like. And um, these regions where there is a lot of glucose accumulation will be shining and we will know, okay, here is the tumor, there is the tumor. That means that really cancer loves sugar. Well, it's not always so easy. Uh, there are some tumors that are not very dependent on sugar. They may be not visible on PET scan with glucose, but uh, if you scan them with glutamine, for example, they be, will be very visible. But it's another type of tumors. Most are like this, glucose dependent. And there is a keto diet when they decrease the amount of uh, sugar, of uh, carbs, uh, to less than 50 grams per day. And uh, the patient, uh, patient's organism will be in shock. It needs glucose, it's used to glucose, but there is no glucose anymore, and uh, it will need to um, accommodate, and it will need to adapt and uh, retune itself to work on ketone bodies. It will use their fat fuel, and these ketone bodies are not non-fermentable, the tumors cannot eat it, uh, and um, they also may improve the function of mitochondria, protect them, decrease their production of oxygen species, reactive oxygen species, and free radicals uh, damaging DNA in mitochondria. And this is, by the way, a nice approach. There is a lot of preclinical data on keto diet, clinical even data. Here you can see the randomized controlled trial on uh, patients with um, breast cancer undergoing chemotherapy with, before surgery. And uh, then they, some of them got a keto diet, some used a usual diet. And uh, we saw that there is less insulin, uh, less IGF-1. These are things that stimulate uh, growth of cells and also tumor. And uh, we see that there is smaller, uh, better reaction to chemotherapy. Tumor died more. Look, 27 millimeters versus 6 millimeters on usual diet versus uh, keto diet. So, uh, keto diet seems to be a nice approach to uh, the tumor into chronic stress and uh, to try to starve it. But tumors are not, it's ancient, they know how to survive. And uh, it can also live on, for example, glutamine. That's why in many cases keto diet uh, alone is not enough to uh, heal these tumors. But it's one of the um, main basic things to do. Again, this is not official approach. I'm telling you about the approaches that are alternative, but um, I'm quite sure that they will be developed in future and I guess it will be included in standards uh, in future years. Again, what I want to tell you is that uh, cancer cells, according to this theory, don't need oxygen and um, usual cells need oxygen very much. That's why aerobic exercises, different breathing techniques, uh, walking in the forest, uh, fresh air, breathing is very important, but not vigorous exercises as they may actually worsen the situation and increase their hypoxia, low oxygen uh, level, levels in the tissues. It's very important because our cells love oxygen, tumor cells uh, don't need it and uh, I would say even they don't love it because it may produce uh, free radicals in the tumors uh, affecting and damaging them. So this is one side of the approach. We will talk about other uh, sides and other approaches. We'll talk about other issues of this theory in next videos. Please see the full playlist. If you want to support the channel, please, there is a link down below. Uh, I would uh, be happy if you write any comments, any wishes to one another. Maybe share your experience. And I'm waiting for you in the next videos. Goodbye. Don't be afraid.